mother piss bucket. Welcome to a Bonzolium video. I'm your host, Terry Keating, here at Bonzolium Drums Limited. Yes! We're talking about three songs here today. We're talking about two police songs, the band The Police, with Stuart Copeland to play the drums, and a third song by Stevie Nicks on her debut solo record called Edge of Seventeen. Edge of Seventeen, by the way, the drummer playing there is Russ Conkle. Okay, Edge of Seventeen goes like this: If you have, if you, just like the one wing dove, you sound just like you like she's singing. Ooh, that is it. Okay, so I'm gonna make this as short as possible because I'll start to yap about this and that. But we have in 1979, the Police came out with an album called Regatta de Blanc. Their second record on that record is a song called Bring on the Night. A great recording. I'm sure you heard it before. There's actually a classic live version, which you can find on YouTube. The police are playing at a place called, now bear with me here. It's either Gateshead, Gates, she, I think it's Gateshead, okay? 1982, you can't miss it. Sting has like a yellow windbreaker on, and for whatever reason, he has some residue on each end of his mouth here. But they play a blistering version of Bring on the Night. It's, it, it, to me, I prefer it to the original. Copeland, by the way, turns the whole beat around when the chorus comes, which is out of hand, you have to see. Again, that's the police, Gateshead, Bring on the Night, watch your, get a parallel window open, or we'll just remember, okay? But here's the deal. So on Bring On The Night, Copeland essentially just plays two and four on the bass drum. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now, two years later, we get to Edge of Seventeen off of Stevie Nicks' debut album. Russ Conkle playing the drums from Kansas, I think from Kansas, but Ross Conkle plays the drums. What he does there, it's like the same kind of feel, like the guitar kind of does the same sort of jigga, jigga, jigga. But what Conkle does is he plays the bass drum on the and of the one and the and of the three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... That's what that crazy cat does. So what happens is, is then this. Spirits in the Material World came out a little bit later that year, okay? Spirits in the Material World is actually just like Bring on the Night, where the bass drum is on the two and the four. I have videos here on YouTube. I have a drum cover of um, um, Spirits in the Material World, as well as a couple of videos, but essentially it's the same thing with Copeland. That bass drum is on the two and the four. It always gave the illusion to people when it first came out that that bass drum is on the and of the two and the and of the four. It is actually not. If you, because the problem kind is, if you think of the, when, when Spirits in the Material uh, World starts, if you think of those as like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, relative in that from that angle, it sounds like the bass drum's on the end of the two and the end of the four. But it's not. If you see, again, if you see a live version of Spirits in the Material World, it's immediately impair. I mean, you can see it immediately. You can play that in Spirits in the Material World, right over the top of the verse. You could, except just substitute the bass drum for the snare. Okay? So, but what happens is, the reason why I'm just bringing this up, because I think a lot of people never really sort of thought of the grouping of these songs, and how kind of, they're sort of in the same sort of, in, in the same thing, in the sense that I think a lot of drummers would probably influence, there is indeed a song which sounds a hell of a lot like Bring on the Night and then like Spirits in the Material World, where that bass drum is played on the end of something by this Russ Conkle. Okay? So anyway, my point is, is this. Bring on the Night comes out in 1979. Conkle hears it. They do the song. He does the song Edge of 17 with Stevie Nicks. Puts the bass drum maybe in a way that he was influenced by it. Maybe he thought that the bass drum in that song was not on 2 and 4, but whatever. I'm sure he did. He's a world-class drummer. But in fact, that bass drum on Edge of 17 is on the end of 1 and the end of 3. Whereas then, that's later that same year, uh, Spirits in the Material World comes out off Ghost in the Machine, 
and that bass drum sounds like it's on the and of two and and of four, which was probably assisted in a weird way by the fact that drummers at that point had heard Edge of 17 a bunch of times. But no, in fact, the bass drum is really in spirits and material. Everything is just on two and four. But the way Sting, that evil master of, he's very genius. I think the way he seeded the vocal, there's no political solution, and the way his bass line sort of goes, it really does lend itself if you're not used to sort of the upbeat of the Indeed, which is on Bring On The Night, that same thing, you know, that's what Sting's going, that upbeat, it's the same thing. Here we go. See, that's the thing, Copeland actually, when he plays the chorus at Gateshead, he probably did it at a bunch of other shows too, he actually is playing the chorus as if the <laughs> dun, dun, those upbeats are the one. It's, it's pretty freaking cool. It's just a big jumble of crazy town. So again, check out Gateshead, The Police, Bring On The Night, Edge of 17, Stevie Nicks. You'll hear where the drummer actually was influenced by Bring On The Night and then played sort of his version of it, where the bass drums are on the end of one and the end of three, and then later that year, Copeland comes out again, they come out with Spirits and Material World, and the bass drum is just on two and four, but it gives it the illusion that it's on the end of two and the end of four. So that's it from the Bonzo William Studios for today. Let me show you this, though. My lovely wife, I gotta tell you, God love her. Some years ago, she... <laughs> she bought me this snare. Six and a half by 14 segmented. I think the wood is... Um... I, I thought it was rosewood. See how dark it is on the inside? But this doesn't look rosewoody. Anyway, it's a damn fine drum. Thank you to my baby for buying it. I seldom ever play it. Just recently, I had George over here. My friend George and Ryan. Let me put these on. I'm a little more comfortable. George and uh, Ryan were over. George and Ryan were over. And they really liked it. Here, I mean, check that out. I think it's pretty beefy, it's pretty nice. George really liked it. I was like, George, I'll sell it to you for $10 trillion. Hope everyone's having a good day. A lot more videos coming soon though. I'm, I'm in the business of back and making videos again. I still have some um, Bonzolium shirts left. And I have some uh, Bonzolium 5A sticks and 2A sticks left and some 2B. So that's bonzolium at gmail.com. That is my Email if you want to send me any questions about drums or bottom or any symbols or something you want to buy. I remember I know a lot about gear. Um, again, so uh, thank you for subscribing if you have. Please do if you haven't. Hit that. They always say hit that notification bell. I don't know where the hell the notification bell is. And remember, Bonomology and PFOZ, People's Friend of Zeppelin here on YouTube, and my friend Vintage Drummer here on YouTube. But remember, Ty and I. Ty Vera and I are making an album from the ground up. I composed drum parts. I recorded them professionally. I sent them off to Ty out in L.A. We, he layers the stuff on there, and there are, see, these are songs totally co-written by he and I. We just released the third song a few days ago. It's called Gypsy Butterfly. You can find it on Spotify and Amazon Music and all that stuff. If you say, seriously, if you say to your device, say, Gypsy Butterfly, plays Gypsy Butterfly, it'll come up. Play Gypsy Butterfly. We have three out already. The fourth is coming. It's a dandy. So we're going to have, a, 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 eventually, I think like 15 or 16 songs, we're going to put out a vinyl record, which should be nice. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope everyone is well. Um, I hope everyone is well. You know what I mean? In these tough times. More videos coming soon. Straight up on Zolium. Straight also music off the Ty Ver Terry Keating record. And also some interviews. I haven't forgotten about trying to do some interviews. Okay, so I'm still going to do that. If you haven't seen uh, Rick Beato's interview of Matt Cameron on his channel, you got to see that. It's pretty freaking cool. Thank you for watching. More videos on the way. I really appreciate you. Thank you.